So it is the expression for the energy of rotational energy levels. Up till now we have considered that the frequency of scattered radiations will be either given by new excitation minus delta in the first case where the frequency decreases and we get Stokes lines or it will be given by new bar is equal to new excitation minus plus delta E equation number 2 and we get anti-Stokes lines. We get anti Stokes lines. Now delta E can be calculated by using this expression for energy E is equal to Bj into J plus 1. We have three equations. The first one is for Stokes scattering in which the frequency of scattered radiation nu bar is given by nu bar nu excitation minus delta E for Stokes lines. And here the frequency of scattered radiation is less than the exciting radiation. Second case, the frequency of scattered radiation is greater than the exciting radiation and we write it as nu bar is equal to nu excitation plus delta E and it leads to anti-Stokes lines. And both these lines, they represent the S branch. The third equation is for the energy epsilon is equal to B j into j plus 1 per centimeter or in joules we have E is equal to B h c j into j plus 1 in joules. 3 and 3 dash. It was the third equation. It is equation number 3, equation number 5. We can use any one of these two equations. Now we come back to the original position. Let us suppose that uh, we have a molecule which is present in any energy level say j is equal to 0 j1 j2 and j3 let us suppose that the initial rotational energy level is j it is initial rotational energy level is denoted by J and the final rotational energy level has a quantum number J plus 2 as is the requirement for Raman spectroscopy. So the energy of the molecule in the initial state is given by EI initial energy is equal to B J into J plus 1 equation number 6 the energy in the final rotational level E final is given by B where J the value of J is J plus 2 for this J we write J plus 2 and for this J we also write J plus 2 plus 1 so we get energy in final level rotational energy in final level is equal to b j plus 2 j plus 3 the change in energy accompanying this rotation is given by delta e is equal to e final minus e initial r put this values we know the value of initial energy from equation 6 and we know the value of final energy from equation 7 we put these values into this equation and we get delta E 
is equal to b j plus 2 j plus 3 minus b j into j plus 1 solving this expression we get delta e is equal to b j square plus 3j plus 2j plus 6 minus b j square plus j taking the b common b is called the rotational constant b j square plus 5j plus 6 minus j square plus j opening the parenthesis we get b into j square plus 5j plus 6 minus j square minus j cancelling the common terms j square minus j square plus 5j minus j 4j we get the delta e value is obtained as b 4j plus 6 b into 4j plus 6 now we can put this value into equation number 1 and equation number 2 to find the frequency of stokes lines and anti stokes lines making this substitution of delta e into equation 1 and 2 we get new bar the frequency of scattered radiation is equal to new excitation minus b into 4j plus 6 for stokes lines equation number 1 dash and new bar is equal to new excitation plus b 4j plus 6 equation number 2 dash now by using these equations we can calculate the frequency of scattered radiations and we can know whether the lines belong to stokes lines or anti stokes lines now the constant b is called the rotational constant the value of this rotational constant is given by h over 8 pi square i c where h is Planck's constant 8 is constant pi is 3.143 c is the speed of light and i is known as the moment of inertia of molecules we had already discussed in the previous uh, lectures that how we can calculate moment of inertia for different molecules for linear top for asymmetric top for spherical top we had discussed all these cases the general formula for moment of inertia is is given by mu mu r square where mu is the reduced mass of the molecule and r is the distance between two atoms or it may be called equilibrium internuclear distance equilibrium internuclear distance the reduced mass is can be calculated by the formula if we have a diatomic molecule having two masses m1 and m2 
having uh, a distance uh, bond length r e then in this case the reduced mass is given by m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into r square r e square equilibrium bond distance or it is called bond length r e is rep representing the bond length so the question is uh, where the raman spectroscopy will be helpful now if we have molecules like h2 n2 or o2 which have no permanent dipole moment and are microwave inactive which have no change in dipole moment with the rotation or vibration they have no change in dipole moment with vibration hence they are ir inactive however they show a change in polarizability with vibration or rotation here we are considering rotation they show a change in polarizability with rotation they will be raman active and we can study their uh, pure rotational raman spectra pure rotational raman spectra can be studied rational raman spectrum can be obtained for them in these rotational raman spectrum if we know the value of we can calculate if we know the value of b we if we know the frequency of scattered radiation if we know the frequency of excited exciting radiations we can find out the value of b b can be obtained and as b is given by h or 8 pi square ic once the value of b is known h is known 8 is known pi is known c is known so we can calculate moment of inertia i and once the moment of inertia i is known we also know the reduced mass of the molecule from the masses of atoms m1 m2 m1 and m2 so the moment of inertia the reduced mass is given by this formula now once the reduced mass is known we can find out the bond length of molecules so from the raman spectrum we can find out we can determine or we can calculate the bond length of linear diatomic molecules like h2 n2 and o2 which are microwave inactive which are ir inactive but they are raman active allah hafiz for today